Hello everyone, I'm Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a double approval in Power Automate. If you enjoy Power Automate, Power Apps, SharePoint, Teams, Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos for those areas. So let's get into the video. All right, so I am doing a double approval from a Microsoft form and I'm storing the data in a SharePoint list. I feel like that's the easiest way to do this. I allow, I like storing data in SharePoint list. It makes everything in the uh, Power Platform really easy to use. So my request form is just uh, a basic form. Uh, what device are you requesting? When do you need a device by? What is your department? Any other details? And this is going to go to a user where they can either approve or deny. And then based on their approval, it's going to go to another user to approve or deny. And that's basically the double approval. And I'm going to do this in one flow. All right, so we want our flow to be an automated cloud flow because we want it to trigger every time a new form response is submitted. So let's do approval, device approval. When a new response is submitted would be the one you wanna choose. All right, so I'm just going to pick the form. Uh, all your forms that you have access to should show here. This is the request device form. Next step is going to be you want to get the response details from the form. So when it's submitted, you want to get all the answers from uh, the form. That's just get response details. The form ID is just going to be under custom value. So it is the request device form, and the response ID will be the response from the first step so the response id so let's go ahead and create an item in sharepoint so we can at least log this and before i do that we're actually going to do another step which is uh what was it get user so we want to get the user's profile that actually submitted the form so we're going to do the get response details through responders email this will allow us to get um, more details about the user that submitted the form. So for the create item, I'm working in the information technology SharePoint and the list is the device request. So information technology device requests. And I have a few columns here just uh, where I can map the answers from the form. So I just got the device due by department details. I have a choice field for first approval. So the choices are approved and I pending. Uh, you can either add more choices if you want. I'm just doing uh, very basic choices for this. And then the second approval is the same as the first with the same options and requested by would be the user that submitted the form. So we're just gonna map this out. So under get response details, my title is actually the device. So what device are you requesting? The do by is the it isn't showing here, so let's go ahead and type in what would you, when would you need this device by? So if your option isn't showing there, that's because this is a date and time field, so it's looking for date and times in that dynamic content. It doesn't doesn't like know that this question is a date and time, so you have to like type it out. When would you need the device by? So department. What is your department details? Any other details? First approval value. So we are going to set this as pending right now because we still need to get an approval for this and requested by claims. So let's go ahead and enter in the get user profile. I'm just going to get the mail and that should get the user's email. Or you can probably use responders email if you want. Uh, it just depends how you want to log the user's information. Like as you can see here, we get the preferred name from the get user profile. You can get the display name. Uh, you can get other details like their department. So that's why I like to include the get user profile step because you can pull in more information just to make your list look a little bit better if you want to add additional columns. All right, so we're going to get create the item and then we want to send out the first approval. So start and wait for an approval. Approval type, we're just going to do first to respond here. 
If you have multiple people that need to respond, you would select the other options of the title for this approval. So I'm just going to do new device request. And this will be the title because that's the device title. And we'll do by. And I will say requested by email. So we'll do the email of the user that requested that. And that's under the create item. So assign to, we're just going to assign it to myself, but uh, this would be the user that's handling the first approval. Details, I'm not going to add any details. If you want to add more details about this, you can go ahead, but I'm just going to include an item link to the item in SharePoint. Because I feel like the screen in SharePoint, it's a lot easier to read than the details. So we're just going to do link. Let me get the dynamic content. The link to item. So that'll bring up the item in SharePoint with uh, all the details attached to it. Okay, so we're going to start and wait for the approval. And then let's do a condition. So based on the response from the approval, we're either going to update it to approved or update it to denied. So let's go ahead and do the outcome is equal to approve. So if it's approved, it should respond with approve. So since it's approved, we want to update the item. Information technology, device request, ID is going to be the create item ID. Uh, since titles are required field, you just have to re-enter in that. And everything else should stay the same. Besides, we want to set the first approval value to approved. And if no, we just want to do the same thing, but set that to a denied. And if you want to add like an email back to the respondent saying their approval is denied, you can also add that, but I'm not going to in this, but it would just be send an email action. And now we'll set the first approval value to denied. So that's all for the if no. So let's go ahead if yes, because we have to send this off to another approver. So we'll do approval. So star and wait for approval to approval type first to respond. And second approval or device request. And then I'll just do the device by and we'll do requested by email. I'll sign to this. So this would be like the person above the first approval. If you have like a two step approval. And we'll just do the item link to the SharePoint. Ooh, I almost clicked off this, which wouldn't have been good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do the, the same condition again. Condition. So if, star and wait for approval two. Make sure you select the uh, approval two. Because if you do the other one, you're going to get the response from the previous one. So outcome is equal to approve. And like above, we're just going to update the item. Update item, information technology, list name, device request, ID. You can either do the update item. We'll just, we'll just stick with the create item ID. And then it's just the same, same title. And then we, the first approval is already approved. So we're just going to do the second approval value to approved. And I forgot, but you want to set the update item for the second approval value here to pending because that approval is going to be pending right after the first one. Let's go ahead and do update item three. Actually, it's just update item. Information technology. Device request ID. Read item. Go ahead and get the title. From the create item. So the first one was approved. We'll set the second one to denied. And if you want to send out emails during all this to update the users on the track of their approval, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not going to add the emails because uh, just to make the video a little bit shorter, so you guys don't have to sit through a whole whole lot of chatter. So that'll be the flow. So let's go ahead and run it just to make sure it runs okay. I'll go ahead and submit a new form. 
So we want a Windows laptop we want to buy tomorrow, which is my birthday. And uh, we want uh, the IT department. That's where I work. Any other details, please hurry. And once we submit this, the flow should run. So we'll back out and take a look. All right, so it looks like it's submitted to. So I think I have another flow. Don't worry, I have another flow that's actually being ran with that one. Yeah, so this I need to turn off this flow. So it ran twice. Let me cancel this one. Sorry about that. So we're canceling that one. So I'm just going to approve both of these. So it goes to their Microsoft Teams just for an approval. So let's go back in the flow, go to the running, and we will submit both because I don't know which one is which. So we approved it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the right request. And let me delete the other one. So the first one I got approved because I accepted the first approval and the second one is now pending. I should receive an, another request and this is the second approval right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on approve. Uh, if the user want more information, they would click on the attachment right here and this will take them to the SharePoint list with more details about the item. So let's go ahead and approve this. So they both were approved. Let's just reload the SharePoint. And now that they're both approved, you can add more actions to what you have to do. And as you can see, the flow ran successfully. All right, so that is how you do the double approval in Power Automate. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you in the next video.